All right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So as you can see here, I have a 100 foot length of blasting wire. This is the same stuff I used in my episode six of my mining project. I've affixed to it a small light bulb, as you can see there. You see, what we figured happened when I tried to detonate the explosives with uh, the uh, wire and the blasting generator is the wire was just so long that the resistance built up to the point where the uh, fuses to set off the powder were not, which are basically the same as this light bulb, just uh, without the glass cover, were just not getting enough power to actually set off the gunpowder. So here's a 1.5 volt uh, alkaline battery, and let's uh, hook the uh, leads of this directly to this light bulb, and you'll be able to see that it does light up pretty nice. See that? It lights up. Now, battery is hooked uh, through the wire, so the battery is being hooked through 100 feet of wire. Let's uh, touch these ends together, and you'll see you get basically nothing. I can see a little tiny glow there, but that's not very much. Th that right there would be enough to set off gunpowder, but even this battery is probably better than my blasting generator because the blasting generator only produces a charge that lasts like this long. See, you don't even see it light up through that. So let's actually hook this uh, through this multimeter here. Okay, so there we go. It's hooked up to the multimeter. As you can see, we're getting 1.48 volts, which is what I'd expect from this battery. Let's put this on uh, milliamps. See, I'm getting roughly 109 milliamps through this system. Now, one person suggested that I cool the wire off to decrease its resistance. This would be absolutely absurd to do in the mine because yeah, it'd take a lot of work to cool it off and I may as well just get bigger wire if I'm gonna spend the trouble to cool it off. But it got me thinking, what would happen if I actually did cool this wire off as cold as I could get it? Say, with some liquid nitrogen. Would this light get brighter? Would I be able to put more current through it because the resistance of the wire actually decreases? So let's uh, put this inside this Dewar flask. All right, there we go. It's all hooked up. Let's add the nitrogen and see what happens. I can see the amperage is already increasing. It's up to 126 now. All right, all the nitrogen's in. I don't see anything happening with the light bulb. It's glowing a little bit. The uh, multimeter must be taking a lot of resistance through it as well. There's the coil in the nitrogen. So that's rather interesting. It seemed to have uh, lowered the resistance a little bit and uh, that increased the amount of current that is moving through this wire. Let's take this coil out now, if I can. Uh, stuck, there we go. And let's uh, plunge it into warm water and see what happens. Here we go, it's making a lot of fog. Submerge this completely, warm it up. Nope, oh, I must have unhooked something, hold on. All right, we're back up to around 110 uh, milliamps now that it's warmed up. So let's actually take the uh, multimeter out now to reduce that amount of uh, resistance. That way we can get the bulb glowing again. And let's actually dim the lights to see if we can see this uh, thing brighten when I put it in the nitrogen. I should say it got brighter, look at that. The uh, multimeter didn't really seem to show much of a change, but then again, the multimeter was also a significant source of uh, resistance to the circuit. Now I'm gonna take this coil of wire and dip it into this warm water. Ooh, freeze my fingers here. Okay. Here it is, it's going into the warm water. Look at that. It gets dimmer almost immediately. It's all but gone. Look at this. The coil is completely frozen with water. 
<laughs> it's hard as a rock. Now I'm sure there's some of you out there who were able to deduce the amount of resistance that was in the wire and the amount that it dropped just by using Ohm's Law. And for the rest of you, you probably were screaming at the screen asking me to just use the Ohm function on the uh, multimeter. So as you can see in this uh, coil, we have 1.4 ohms of resistance. Now let's add the nitrogen and see how much that drops. Uh, that's dropping significantly, isn't it? There we go. We're clear down to 0.1 ohms. <laughs> Zero. So it's, it's within the detection limits of this uh, multimeter here. So that is a significant drop in resistance in that wire. No wonder the light bulb got so bright. So now I'm going to answer the question as to why it's actually becoming a lower resistance as I get it cold. And the answer is actually that it's a quantum phenomenon. You see, as I constrain the momentum of the particles in the material, basically get them colder, reduce their kinetic energy, I'm actually increasing the uncertainty as to where those particles are. See, it's the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. As the uh, momentum is constrained and known better, then the actual location becomes uncertain, because you can never know both at the same time. This causes the particles to basically expand their uh, probability space, which makes it so the electrons are easier to jump between the atoms, because it's essentially like their wave function is expanded, they're actually bigger. So it's easier for them to jump across the gaps, which, in, which decreases the amount of energy it takes in order to actually get them to jump across and move through the wire, lowering its electrical resistance. And now you can see as it's warming up, and uh, I mean increasing the kinetic energy of the particles, then I'm allowing the electrons to be known more specifically in their location, so it's increasing the resistance again. Since I have the nitrogen out and I'm talking about electricity and resistance, I thought I'd try another experiment here. I have an aluminum plate and a large magnet. Now if I take the magnet and move it next to the plate without touching it, you can see that I can move the plate. This is because the magnet is inducing an electric current in the metal, and the electric current is producing an opposing magnetic field, which causes resistance to all motion. You see, it's not attracted to the plate, but it is, but it does move with it because it's trying to uh, inhibit the motion. Uh, this is actually, the way this works is similar to how if you are spinning an electric motor, a DC electric motor, and then short out the terminals, how the electric motor will suddenly stop or become very difficult to turn. That's because it takes work to move those electrons around. The magnet is moving the electrons, it's taking work to do it, and so it's really not favorable for the uh, metal to continue moving in, with respect to the magnet. As you can see, I can get it spinning, and then I can stop it without even touching it. Everything that conducts electricity exhibits this behavior, even mercury, as you can see here. I'm not touching it with the magnet, but the magnet is definitely interacting with the mercury. See that? Because this is an electrical effect, the better the conductor is, the stronger this effect will be. If this was a silver plate, I might even see better results. Now we just proved that cooling off the metal decreases its resistance, so let's see what happens when I pour liquid nitrogen into this metal plate if it has a, a stronger effect, maybe. I don't know, I've never tried this before. It's gonna be interesting. <laughs> there we go, now it's starting to stick. That's kind of cool, actually. Once the nitrogen finally, re once the uh, aluminum finally got cold enough for the nitrogen to actually start sticking to it, it just finally cooled the rest of the way down. Ooh, ooh, that's cold. <laughs> okay, ooh, now we got a very cold plate. Let's see if the magnet has any bigger effect on it. Oh yeah, that is significantly better. See how much faster I can get that? <laughs> how fast it stops? That is cool. 
So being cold definitely increased the uh, eddy current effect on it. Very cool. <laughs> All right, one last experiment. Let's hook this battery straight up to the light bulb and let's see what happens when I cool the battery off with the liquid nitrogen. Will the light bulb stay lit? All right, here goes. Might take a while to cool it off completely. Oh yeah, look, that light's getting dimmer. And gone. There's nothing coming out of it. I guess batteries can't handle the cold. Electrons really can't flow through an electrolyte if the electrolyte is frozen solid. <laughs> Well, I'm going to set this on the counter for a few minutes and see if it actually uh, recovers and see if that light turns back on. Hey, look at this. I think the uh, battery might actually be recovering. See that? The light's actually on a little bit. So I guess the battery might have survived. Yeah, as it warms up, that light's definitely getting brighter. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.